A little more than a year ago, Hampton Inns was kind of a gleam and a dream. Hey. Drawing straws, I ended up being the general manager of the second Hampton Inn in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Hampton Inn's 100% satisfaction guarantee. It's our guarantee, it's my guarantee. Independence Day came when we sold Holiday Inns to the Brits. A day is coming when new employees will accommodate even complex guest requests with the assured confidence of veterans. We are delighted to open the first Hampton Inn in Mexico. Hampton Inn and Suites, number one. <laughs> A thousand hotels in 2000. Make it Hampton. A mastermind move. I sleep in my home here with Hampton and Betty. That's how good I think it is. That's always been the Hampton, always been the Hampton world. This is our planet, teeming with life, supporting a huge and growing populace moved by change they cannot control, caught up and driven by forces they do not understand. The forecast for environments, both natural and financial, is uncertain. Travel for both business and leisure is one of the broadest sectors of trade worldwide. The industry of hospitality now faces conditions most inhospitable. This will be the worst of times for many hotel operators, but not for a brand that has clear vision, deep strength, and an on-target product and service that guests and the times demand. Hampton has a unique combination of a focused quality product, great people, and the smarts that give its partners the edge over competitors. Using all the tools at hand wisely, Hampton can not only weather the storms of change, but is well positioned to take advantage of the opportunities change inevitably produces. Now, this has been said before. You see, just a little over 25 years ago, in another time of change and challenge, an idea was born for a new kind of hotel, designed from the ground up with the guest in mind. Clean, simple, and smart. And so, plans were laid, promises made, and a dream was born. And here's the thing, it all came true. It is early 1983 in Memphis, Tennessee, world headquarters of the largest and most successful hotel company in the world. Here, a small group of owners and executives are considering changing market conditions and how to respond. I was uh, active on their fr franchise board and so had an, uh, kind of an insider's uh, view of uh, the hotel industry. And we went to Holiday at the time and said, we need another brand. We were still building the Holiday Inns of the 1960s in the 1980s and still expecting the customers to be comfortable there, and they weren't. They were on the back side of their life cycle and what were they gonna do about it? We were doing a concept study on what other segments of the hospitality industry should we be in as Holiday Inn, as a brand. And then we started hearing these rumors that there was a new brand in the works. It's not gonna be called Holiday Inn. We're not even positive what the name is, um, but we'd like for you to fly to Memphis and talk to us about it. It's gonna be an economy brand. There's something new coming up, and he's told me about his friend Ray Schultz, who is also with the company, and this new concept. And he said, I think this would be perfect for you uh, to get in at the ground level. 
could envision, you know, a parking lot full of trucks and motorcycles, economy hotel, is that really what I wanted to work with? We'll try to focus on those travelers who are looking for a really comfortable, consistent place to stay at a great price value. We'll put it next to tired old Holiday Inns and kick butt. But once you had an opportunity to sense the energy and the passion that was part of the beginning roots of the brand, um, I knew it's something that I wanted to be, had to be involved with. By late September 83, Holiday officially formed a new limited service division and names Ray Schultz to head the effort to develop the new rooms only product. December 83 is the date set to introduce the concept to a select group of Holiday Inn owners and officially launch the brand. All is ready, except no one can come up with a name. You know where the name Hampton Inn came from? No, His wife. <laughs> I said, Ray, I don't know how you could be this far along with this project and not have a name. So she's reading through her magazines and she said, well, I'm going to just copy some down. I think she was looking at Colonial Homes. I start opening my magazines and the first name that jumped out at me was Hampton Inn. And I thought, well, you know, to pacify her, I better put one of these names in the next round of research that goes out, and I put Hampton in there, and it came back just strong as dirt. Radical ideas are introduced. Among them, finding out what was most important to guests. And we were trying to figure out exactly what traveling America was looking for. By early 1984, prototype rooms are in place, and the core elements of quality and focus on service were already taking shape. The origins of Hampton's unique personality are evident from the very start. Ed Phillippe was Hampton's first VP of operations. I think when the general public walks through and walks into the Hampton Inn Hotel, they're gonna be, they're gonna look at it and they say, wow, this for $30? And that's exactly the impression that we wanna leave them with. And uh, we're gonna focus on two things at the inn operations level. We're going to focus on the people that work there, number one. But more importantly, we're going to focus on the customer. The stage is set for opening the first Hampton Inn. The physical product is in place. Excitement is high. Then something unplanned happens. The first connection, the first guest, and it begins with a cup of coffee. Dolene Mize, the first breakfast hostess. Well, that was the most exciting day in anybody's lives. Uh, uh, Everybody was on pins and needles. Well, this man came in, a nice looking man. His name was Bill Taylor, and he was from Charlotte, North Carolina. And somebody had sent him there from the Holiday Inn because they were full. But our inn didn't check in until 12 o'clock. But he had luggage, you know, and he wanted to check in. And uh, that was really the first day I went to the lobby and made a pot of coffee. And I said, let's have some coffee. When she came on board, I mean, she just had the, the personality and just the you know, she, she never met a stranger and just her whole attitude about things and it was such an easy fit. He wound up staying a month. He'd go home on weekends and come back and he brought three or four men with him so they were almost permanent guests for a long time. And he, he just got to be a family member. And we built it one customer at a time and she, has, she played such an important role on that, as did everybody in that hotel. I mean, it was just a, it was a great group of people. That was the, the first cup of coffee it served. And so began one of the great success stories in American business. It is a story of triumph over hard times and beating the odds. It is a very human story, best told by those who lived it. As the brand launched, it did not take long for the vast holiday bureaucracy to feel threatened. Expectations for the experiment were low. I called my boss at that point to say, wow, I'm thinking about this opportunity to join this new group within Holiday Hampton Inns. And he said, Phil, you know, I don't think I would do that if I were you. It's just, it's never going to be successful. You know, Holiday Inn is the ruler. Anything else that comes along is just not going to make it. We still owned the big brand, the Holiday Inn brand. There were a lot of people in the corporation who weren't as enthusiastic about the little brand coming along. He actually said, and, and I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, I would bet within less than a year you'll be crawling back, asking for your job back because the brand just won't be successful. 
one of my jobs, you'd think the, you'd think I own the end. I'd go around to the other ends around, you know, the little ends around that area. I'd count the cars <laughs> to, make, to see how we were doing. And so for the first five years, I'd guess, we labored under that and grew slowly, meaningfully, but slowly. We built Hampton Inn number seven. We built the ninth Hampton in the system in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, we were also building at the same time in the same town, which was Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a number, and it turned out to be number 13. And uh, we ended up building that. We were, I think, number 17. I remember uh, standing up and saying, uh, I think we can develop 100 Hampton Inns this year. And we all kind of laughed and said, you know, well, there was nothing like thinking big. Well, we opened up this particular property, and I think we were like 131 or something like that. We opened up Hampton Inn out here, and there wasn't really any name recognition. We were the 197th. I think we were 348 or something, and I, we thought, man, that's a lot of Hampton Inns. And I had a big map, and I bought these little colored tacks and uh, put it over my desk at home, and I'd put everywhere we'd open one, I'd put one of those little tacks in there, but I ran out of tacks. <laughs> Hampton was beginning to grow, but things were far from easy. We introduced a new product right into the teeth of overbuilding, uh, declines in occupancy, uh, really a tough time. Uh, maybe a time not too unlike today. It was a little scary. Um... I cleaned the pool the first year on a daily basis, and uh, Jeannie worked the desk, and, and it was hard uh, having a brand new pioneering brand. His interest rates were high. Uh, I know that because I was paying them for a while. People forget, you know, they think of the go-go 80s. You know, let me tell you something, it was, it was tough then. It was tough to get money, and, you know, and that brand came, emerged out of that. By 1989, Having beaten the odds, and with 220 hotels in a growing system, Hampton makes a bold move, offering an unconditional guarantee of satisfaction to guests. Oh, the guarantee. Golly day, how quickly I forget about the guarantee. Goes to show you I'm not behind that front desk all the time. I said, how about if we have this statement which says, if you're not completely satisfied, we don't expect you to pay. They said, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> I thought we'd lost our mind. They sort of scratched their head. My initial reaction was, was, was not a positive one. It was one of, uh, you know, is somebody crazy? So scared, yes. Concerned about losing money, yes. Concerned about people who are going to abuse the guarantee, yes. Um, is it a positive thing? Absolutely so. And we started the guarantee, and, uh, you know, it took off like crazy. And people didn't really believe us. And we, we stepped up to the plate and we gave free rooms and we probably gave some that we shouldn't have, but we, we've been over backwards to try to prove that we're, you know, we're very serious about this. We, we built our culture around the fact that we all believed in this thing, even though it sounded crazy to everybody. We believed in it. And we believed that uh, there wouldn't be too many people to follow in our footsteps, and they didn't. The most powerful message from the guarantee really was that we were telling every single team member at the hotel, you have the power to action the guarantee if that's what it takes to make a guest satisfied. And that was unheard of in the industry. It did two things. It gave us a marketing plus, and then it put the pressure on the hotel to make sure they delivered so the guests could not ask for the 100% back. If we mess something up and, and we drop the ball anywhere, we don't want your money. There's no place that you can experience that today. Some people say they have it. They don't have it. I'm telling you. Hampton does. More than anything else, it has always puzzled me why other businesses just don't get it. This is the greatest business strategy that we have ever discovered to be the leader. If you own up to your promise, then your pe the people will come back, and they do over and over. It's a core value of the brand. And I think if you believe that highly of the brand, uh, that's part of the package. It's who we are. It's, it's what differentiates us from all of those other hotels. And it, it proved another point. You know, we did what we said we were going to do. The guarantee was not the only area where Hampton broke new ground. Back in the early 80s, uh, late 70s, early 80s, every hotel didn't have a property system. 
Here at the Hampton, we thought we were living large because you had three keys for every room. Um, and that's all there were. So you knew if a, if a room was occupied because if you had all three keys, it was a good thing. If a guest went home with the key, it was bad. People still believed that they could keep up with the receipts best out of an old shoebox. Any correspondence had to be with a typewriter. Every rate letter that went out, it wasn't even a typewriter with memory. So it's a typewriter. Any task that went on in the hotel, how could you best use automation? And it really was a novel concept in the industry. The technology that Promise Hampton built initially has formed the foundation for technology that's across the enterprise now of 2,700 hotels. Hampton kept pushing the edge of the envelope. I mean, even today, like the OnQ system that we have that used to be System 21, that used to be Holodex and all these things, Hampton was the one that was demanding the push to the higher technology. And we inherited H Honors, and everybody felt great about it. I think as a, as a franchisee who knew we were, we've got to have something. And it turned out to be uh, everything that we thought it would be. There's no one in the industry uh, that's uh, anywhere uh, close to what uh, the Hampton uh, platform and delivery system is and technology. Just, they're, they're not even close. In a brand like Hampton, what was so important was consistency. And technology helps people execute consistently. Creating a consistent product and service that stands the test of time was a result of many things. I don't remember a, a, a time when I wasn't sitting on an airplane uh, where if there, uh, if there was a conversation struck up and the word hotel was mentioned, that there wasn't, uh, a, a, the conversation didn't lead to, well, the night I stayed in this Holiday Inn or stayed in this uh, hotel, uh, this bad thing happened, and. And that never, that never did transform itself at the Hampton Inn brand. It was always, ooh, Hampton Inn. Uh, that's, where I, that's where I stay. Guests don't want surprises. They want consistency. They want to know that they can come in and, 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 and get what they already expect. It's the hot shower. It's the good breakfast in the morning and a good night's sleep and a good bed. Uh, those are the things we're selling. Uh, if you guys didn't know it, we're in the used bed business, and you know, we sell used beds every day, and we hope to make it seem like they don't aren't in a used bed. They're in a brand new room every time. Even though the brand made many changes, and you walk in, you see a new, updated lobby and, and technology and things. The brand, there's still a consistency, I think, with the look, and the expectations. People still know what they're going to get. I wanted to get involved with something that showed some consistency, and that's why I chose Hampton Inn. Hampton's delivery of a consistent guest experience has produced guest comments that are, well, consistent. The cleanliness, the quietness. Your pool is clean, your hotel's immaculate. When I first came here a couple years ago, it was just orange juice and a sweet roll. Well, now they have the toast and the jam and the melted butter and, 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 you have, and, and cereal and milk and... Mm. It seems as though there's always upgrades. Uh, I haven't been here in six weeks, and all of a sudden, the bathrooms are upgraded. Um, two trips later, we have brand new bed linens. It's sort of uh, comparable to uh, being a millionaire and spending 10 cents for your room and getting all the service. And the price value is terrific. I do. I think the price value is terrific. We think the price value is the best in the business indicates that you all are doing your homework and you're making those subtle changes that even enhances your your facility. I tell them, if you treat our customer as well as the Hampton Inn treats me, we're going to be in business for a long time with these guys. And here I am still a year and a half later and I really don't have any interest in, in going anywhere else. They said I could not take a taxi cab home. Here, home to the hotel. See, I call it home. <laughs> you know, if I get home, if I get home, if I get back uh, really late, sometimes it feels like home, um, which is, I guess is a good thing, right? So we got to work harder at uh, attracting our guests and uh, uh, keeping our guests comfortable. Uh, and that's where our little Hamptonality theme has come into play. Because we've got Come in the back office, you'll probably hear some a lot of random singing from me most. Um, so I encourage it. I'm a vocal person. I'm always told not to quit my day job, and I always tell them they don't have anything to worry about because I'm going to be here every day. We work hard. We play hard. 
Um, and just, it, it's a great job. We got a great big heart. <laughs> if you don't take this as being work, I take this as being fun. I think we all just have a passion for what we do. That's what I love best about my job, is definitely my staff and being here. I mean, I love the customers and I love Hampton Inn, but there's nothing like the people I have that are here busting their hump that make this it, what it is. What more can we do? I used to tell folks that we took everything about our business seriously except ourselves. And that really freed us up to have a good time. And nobody ever got real serious or emotionally serious about something. We made mistakes. I mean, we were, we were kind of dealing with the unknown anyway. So who knows if you've made a mistake? You know, maybe it's a good mistake. There were not many mistakes. Strong, simple, successful. As Hampton approached the 20-year mark with over 1,200 hotels, it once again does the unexpected. Make It Hampton, I think, was over a hundred different things that had to change, uh, not only in breakfast, but, you know, throughout the hotel. So, I mean, it was a major reinvention. And that's, that's, that's the kind of courage and leadership uh, that even goes back to having that same courage to even create Hampton in the, in the, in the first place. They really thought these things through and engineered it. And thank goodness they did, because this would not be the time you'd want to be doing that. Hampton was saying, okay, we're going to be the leader. We're going to come up with some of the new innovative ways that make life better for the customer. I mean, the customer loves the curved shower rod. Now people put them in their homes because they've experienced them at hotels. Those kind of dramatic changes are, wow. Make It Hampton was clearly the biggest initiative I've ever worked on in my career. We being Hampton got the benefit of that way before our competitors. Howard Johnson's Holiday Inns of the Past, I don't think did the initiative they needed to, and I'm glad they didn't. Um, they waited too long to when they became the old brands now trying for a makeover, so I think Hampton did it right. For some of our competition who's trying to implement those kind of initiatives at this point, today, I think it's gonna be a tough road. Um, we were very fortunate, very smart, or maybe very lucky, maybe a little bit of all of those. Uh, to, to go through that initiative at a different place in time that today gets us just exactly where we need to be. It's a very strategic, very bold move um, that I think only the best leaders of any company um, can put forth and execute upon. Uh, the results have been absolutely tremendous and at the right time um, in the maturity of this brand. After 25 years, as Hampton once again faces difficult times, it is important to remember how it became what it is today. I was just fortunate to be there at the time, and a lot of good people, and I had a lot of good people working with me to build this system. Our brand is successful because of many, many, many people. The whole the reason we were able to do what we did was not because of Ray or me, uh, or any other single person, because we had the best team of people who were dedicated to this industry and to this company that that I've ever seen, and it probably will never happen again. It was right time, right place, right people, right attitude, right environment, and we overcame an awful lot of uh, negatives to to get where we were. We built some great relationships, and that's what we've been. That's what we're here for. We might have a big organization, but it's a um, um, small circle. It was our company. It wasn't anybody else's company. And we did this, and we did it with our friends, our franchisees. It's hospitality. It's a business of uh, emotion, and how you interact with people each day matters, and that's going to determine the success in the future. It's a beautiful place. I don't think necessarily that they're all here because of the building, by far. You know, they're here because of Kirby at the front desk or Christina in housekeeping, and they're here because those people are here every time, and that's what they want to come back to. It's the kind of thing that uh, if you live every day, uh, good things will happen, and they've happened with this chain, and there's not a finer group of people. I think the future is bright because it does have a great foundation. So who would have thunk from zero to 1,600 hotels in 25 years? Like Phil said, who would have thunk it, <laughs> you know? I'm serious, uh, and it really, 
It doesn't seem like 25 years to me. There was a point in time I didn't think we'd ever have a hotel in California, much less in Europe or India or someplace like that. If I, I finally get to the point where I don't want to deal with the day-to-day -day frustrations of the, of the you know, development game and everything, financing game and all that, that uh, I'd be just as happy working the breakfast in any of our Hampton Inns, so save me a position, I'll do it. <laughs> I can't believe that here we are 25 years today talking about what we're going to do for the next 25. It doesn't seem like it's been that long ago since we opened a three-story hotel in Pensacola, Florida, next to our Holiday Inn. The Hampton Inn brand is able to uh, weather the storm better than anybody else. And I suspect it probably will, uh, because it's sort of on target for the times. Yeah, we are kind of getting on up there, but you know, we're the storytellers now. Uh, we're the ones that remember the why, and so many people don't. And uh, so I mean, I think we've got another obligation, not only to keep delivering, but continue to reinforce why we do, we've done what we do, and, and what's made it successful. It's team pride in what we as a group of people collectively have been able to do. And probably more importantly, what we collectively as a team will have the opportunity to do for Hampton the next 25 years the next 50 years, um, pride. It is the dogged pursuit of being the best, of connecting with guests and understanding the need, then filling it, and always with careful thought to plan for the future. It is this quiet strength, this persistence of vision, that has arguably created one of the great successes of modern business. We know that hard work makes dreams come true, we know that guaranteeing satisfaction may be made possible by unrelenting focus on product quality, but is powered by our humanity. This is where we are today. Strong, smart, focused, and still on target. Hampton. Now more than ever, the lighthouse stands strong against the storm, and it is time to dream yet again. Perhaps it all comes back to that cup of coffee. It's just something, uh, something almost sacred about a cup of coffee. If you go into a lobby and, and have a good cup of coffee and somebody speaks to you and, uh, uh, you know, where you're from and uh, act like they care something about you, it, it, it makes you feel a little bit better. And I just treated everybody the same. Uh, I made no difference. They all were the same. I loved them. And I was interested in them. And I just enjoyed my job.